follow peace with all men follow peace and love treat each other as you would treat yourself for without holiness for without holiness for without holiness for without holiness without holiness no man shall see the lord for without holiness for without holiness for without holiness for without holiness without holiness no man shall see without holiness no man shall see without holiness no man shall see the lord i just thank god for holiness this morning for holiness this morning the other thing I was, um, the other praise that was in my heart from about that same time, um, and I hope I remember it. The Lord, the Lord watches over me and I'm glad. The is over me and I'm glad he watches over me he watches over me he watches over me he watches over me the Lord, the Lord watches over me and I'm glad. I just thank God for watching over me. I thank God because holiness is still right. And it's not a denomination. It's not a church. Holiness is the character of God. So without God's character in us, then we can't see him in peace. Lord, be with us as I go before your people. You know what they stand in need of and you know what I stand in need of. So I'm asking you to forgive me for any sins of omission, commission, anything that I have thought, felt, spoke, anything that would come through the senses of this flesh, I'm asking that you would forgive me because your people are worthy to have your word fall on good ground. So I'm speaking into their hearts right now that if there's any ground, fallow ground that needs to be broken up, anything that is preventing this word from falling on good ground to anyone who's hearing me now or later, I'm asking that you would Forgive them, wash them, cleanse them, and make them whole. And Lord, any spirit of oppression, suppression, depression, and even possession, I bind, I cast it out in the authority of Jesus Christ. Without raising my voice, Satan, I speak to you because I know who you are. I know you were Lucifer. I know that you were the bright and morning star angel in heaven before you decided to go against God. But then when that got into your heart, 
that you wanted to be equal with your creator. Jesus said he beheld you fall as lightning. And then you move from being Lucifer to Satan. You are that demonic one, that evil one who goes around just uh, to and fro, acting like you're a roaring lion, but you're not a lion at all. We serve the lion of Judah. Satan, you don't even have teeth in your mouth. So we come against you because you are cotton mouth and mush mouth. So we come against your lying spirit. We come against your spirit of discouragement. We come against your spirit of distraction that comes to cause God's people to not receive what God has for them. So you're bound. You're, if you decide to stay in service, you got to sit back and shut up. But we advise you to leave because the Holy Ghost is in the airways and he is, he is our Wi-Fi network regulator. He never goes out. He never loses power. And he is watching over us right now. And I am glad. I am glad that we have sovereignty and power over all the power of the enemy. So it is in that authority that I speak, stand, and prepare to deliver this word unto God's people. Lord, I thank you. I give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. I honor Lord, the Lord today. He is the head of my life, and I give honor to Apostle Bowers, thanking God for 25 years of service and 25 years of a decision, my mother would say, and I have her pin on again today, having her close to me. My mom would say, I have, Brenda, I have made a decision, and I live by that conviction that there are times when we just have to make a decision. We have to make a decision that we're going to live safe. We just have to make a decision that we're going to do right because it's right to do right. So I thank God that 25 years ago, there was a decision made. And that decision actually wasn't made because there were two people that fell blissfully in love while walking through, uh, tipping through the tulips. It wasn't that at all. It was actually individuals who were very bruised and very scarred and very broken and very hurt and had suffered loss as we both had loss of our spouses and had children that we were trying to raise. And, and the Lord said that it should be so. And there were people impacted. There were churches impacted that still needed leadership. So the Lord brought together broken pieces. So when we talk about vessels unto honor, it was because we watched God take a whole bunch of pieces that were broken, in some cases crushed. Even in, a, even in some situations, some would say pulverized. No way it could be brought back together. But yet and still, here we are 25 years later. Nope, we might not be the best and the brightest. We might not be the biggest. And we might not be um, what even you may think we should be after 25 years. Some may say, well, 25 years, you ought to have this, this, this. Let me tell you something, because I'm sitting here right now. This is a miracle. 25 years has manifested a whole bunch of stuff that some people can stand and say, we have fame and fortune, but I can sit here and tell you that I'm a product of miraculous intercession and intervention from a divine level. So I thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for salvation, sanctification for Jesus and the Holy Ghost, because I am saved. I am sanctified. I am filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I have no other mind but to run on and be with the Lord. I have seen his face more than one time, and I'm excited about that. And I'm trying really hard to do what's mine to do so he don't have to keep on putting me in situations to tell me what he already told me. I'm trying to do the right thing at the right time so that I don't have to keep being retaught. I, I don't want to keep taking the same test over and over. And some of you may pass and get 100 all the time. That's the kind of student my mother raised me to be. I didn't get 
anything if I got less than an A plus. I ain't getting no, I ain't nothing about no allowance. I ain't get no allowance if whatever I got. We ain't have no allowance. The allowance was that you get that you had somewhere to lay your head and had something to eat. So that was the allowance. I didn't get any allowance, but as far as recognition, oh my goodness, if I came home with something less than an A, then it was just bad news. So some of us were brought up in this perfection environment. I know I'm not the only one, but when you're brought up that way, it's really hard once you're an adult. You might think, I ain't gonna be doing, I'm gonna mess up everything. I'm sick of having to do everything perfect, but guess what, it's in you. So I've had to live through God having to take me through the same test because I had to learn what it felt like to flunk. And let me tell you, a miserable feeling is failing something, especially if you thought you passed. It is one thing when you know you failed, and you did, but when you think you passed and you failed, that, whew, I don't know if anybody ever had that feeling, but you put it in the chat if you had. Let me tell you, it feels terrible. When you think you passed something and you done failed, oh Lord, that's like you thought a bill was paid. I, I got a call on Friday, a bill that I knew was paid before in 2019. And they tell me, I know it hasn't been taken care of yet. That's, that's that feeling like, what? I ain't got no money to pay you. I thought I paid you two or three times before. So you get this feeling. But I want you to know that for 25 years, there are so many things that I can say didn't go right. It's a bunch of stuff ain't going right right now. But let me tell you something about Apostle Bowers. He, I have never had to worry about being married to a cheater. I've never had to worry about being married to a beater. I've never had to worry about being married to somebody that uses foul language in the house. I've never had to worry about walking in the house and smelling cigarettes or the, as uh, my grandfather would say, a them funny kind of cigarettes. I've never had to worry about opening my refrigerator and seeing any kind of alcoholic beverage. I've never had to worry about uh, wondering where he was if he wasn't at home at a certain time. So things that might not seem like big deals when you're in the midst of church and things that I've experienced in relationships before. These are things that I, I have never had to worry about the fidelity of our relationship. And I thank God for that. And the other thing is the commitment to ministry and ministering to the people of God has been one that we have kept, even, even if we weren't at the best place as a couple, there's never been a time that either of us have wanted anything other than what's best for God's people. So I'm speaking these things to you so that you're not thinking, oh, we, you just got it all good and stuff. Do you, some of you all remember 25 years ago when over 90% of our church was on welfare. I had been on welfare. I didn't have the formal degrees. I had certifications as did Apostle Bowers. Every one of our degrees were accomplished during this 25 years. And we did it specifically so our children would see how to go a different path other than the welfare route and so that the members would have other means of uh, income. And most everybody in Vessels of Honor is now degreed. We have a larger percentage of degreed individuals than we do non-degreed. And if you took our story, and gave it to Oprah or Ellen or, or Wendy, you pick whoever you want to give it to. It's going to be really hard to find a family. All of our children have master's degrees. I'm talking about the ones we birthed and raised. I'm talking about folks that have a minimum of a master's degree under their belt and nieces and nephews and 
and uh, members, members of the church. Everybody didn't get a degree, but I tell you what, we got people, uh, daycare license certifications, uh, real estate license, life insurance, health insurance, casual, property and casualty insurance. We ended up 25 years we have people that if they wanted to do something other than receive a government check, we role model paved the way and made sure that there was opportunity for that to occur. Now, if you can bear witness to that, and if you feel you have a degree because of our influence or that you're in a better place in life, and let me tell you, people who stayed on their jobs and retired, we have people who are committed to the Milwaukee transit system, driving in the inner city, taking people, putting their lives in jeopardy every day and staying committed to ministry. If you have benefited during this 25 years and just put it in the chat because we have visitors on the line like our brother Brandon and other people that are visiting that aren't members of Vessels of Honor. So no, we, we aren't the mighty and the mega, but let me tell you, we are the mighty and the miraculous. Hallelujah, glory to God. I feel very glad to just share that because it lumps, bumps, and bruises. I, absolutely. But the testimonies are greater than anything that we've gone through. I've been at death door more times than I want to talk about, but I'm still here. And I'm grateful. So God bless you, Apostle Bowers, for 25 years of stick to itness. And uh, we will see what God does from here on out because uh, I mean Jesus all the way. And here we are. So that would have been going over the first part of the message from last week. What I'm going to ask you is if you would please, if you need the background to this word, which is your ending assurance relies on your present endurance. Your, do, do I need to be the one to, to put that up and manage the PowerPoint? I will if I need to, because um, I send it out real late. So you all just let me know. Um, your ending assurance relies on your present endurance. That's what we're going to talk about, because this is still about the first day that I was hospitalized this time. November 30th, 2020, when I was put into the hospital, this entire message is what God spoke to me when I was totally on my way out in really, really bad shape, where the doctor said, we have to go into a rescue mission or she's not going to make it. And Elder James had preached the day before about a rescue mission and didn't even know that those were the exact words that my doctor using and God said to me can I speak through you instead of to you and I said sure you know I always say sure to God I never said no but I'm saying sure too but I said yes but the key is I went through a lot of background I went through a lot of that part of uh, the first part of that hospital experience last week so this week I want to be able to go to the next part and I'm asking you to please go and look at the first part and then you'll be able to have this second part um, uh, when it, it, it will be posted as well. So let me, if I'm going to be a screen. Make Tony the host. Make, I'm sorry. Make Tony the host and we can help. Oh, okay. I need to, so I don't need to put it up. No, just make him, okay. we'll handle it for you. Uh, okay. I'm not, I'm not hosting anything. So I, I huh. no, I don't have a, I don't have a, a host um, authority on my options. <laughs> it says that you're the host. <laughs> Then I don't have to display. <laughs> no, and it doesn't even say that I can that I can share my screen. So let me Yeah, no. It's all right. We are we are good and we are gonna make it happen here today. Let's see. Let's see if it will make me. 
Is this a message? It, it is. So let me see. Actually. Page 11. I have it up for you. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Page 11. We are same, same type. Your ending assurance relies on your present endurance. So what that lets me know is the devil decided that he was going to stick around to hear the word. And, you know, we know he can't get saved, but he, he, he just hang around. So, oh, well. He is still not getting any victory, and God is still on the throne. Are you glad about it? I am. Your ending. How are you going to end this thing? How's your life going to end? How can you be sure that you're going to go to heaven? You're going to see Jesus face in peace. How can you know that you know that you know that you know? Well, it relies on your current right now, this second ability to endure. I gave you the, uh, the uh, definition for endure and what that means. And I gave you a few pieces of peace, but I'm going to review those few pieces of peace with you. And again, asking you to please review the recording from last week as it indicates on slide 12. If you would please review the recording from last week because these are the five points, five being that number of grace. These are the five points that we covered. So what the Lord was really dealing with me with, and I told you that I just decided, okay, Lord, whoever you have made me to be, I will be that. And he has really impressed upon me how the chosen didn't choose to be chosen, right? Mary didn't choose to carry Jesus. Moses didn't choose to be left in, in, in the brook, much less end up with a staff in the Red Sea. He didn't ask to be put in the river and to be raised in Pharaoh's house. So as we look at these key individuals, Esther certainly didn't ask to be Put in position to be in in the with the have to go before the king. So when we look at the, the choices of the chosen, the chosen didn't choose to be chosen, but the chosen have to choose their chosenness. They have to accept it. And then there are the choices of the chosen. So in my case, I'm just saying that only to say that God told me, I don't care that you think that you haven't been chosen. I don't even care that you don't want to be chosen. I need to know if, as a chosen, you're willing to make choices as a chosen. So I had to say, oh, do I, do I, really? you know, it's, it's kind of like being in the call lane. It's kind of like once you get saved and then you still just want to go out and do stuff. It's kind of like that. Called and chosen is kind of like that. Even after you get saved. You just say, how come I can't just go and cook dinner for my family and go to sleep without having all this stuff? The Holy Ghost talking to me all the time, telling me to get up and do stuff. So the choices of the chosen, oh, I'm talking to somebody right now without going into any other slides. Some of you are beyond call, and it takes the call. The sheep have to get saved. But I have accepted, I, again, Irma Cole, thank you for raising me the way you did. I have made a decision that I am who God made me to be. Whoever don't like me, I ain't been liked anyway and been pretending that I've been liked. So what's the big deal? Some of y'all already know what that's like, trying to act like you love when you know you've been hated. So the choices of the chosen, when God said, can I use you in this five-fold ministry, Again, I have said, yes, Lord. So I come to you functioning wherever God chooses as one of his chosen, as an apostle, as a prophet, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a teacher, whatever thus saith the Lord, I am saying, yes, here I am. You have sent me. Now I got to catch up with doing the work. So all of this is me in the hospital being told that I wasn't going to make it. And instead of me being able to lay there like normal people that's in critical care, God spoke to me and said, can I speak through you verses to you? So the scripture he led me to was Matthew 24, which is what we're going to go through today because I gave you all the precursor last week. You got to catch up because I can't go back. Because remember, the past is already gone. When I started talking, it was the present. 
but that present is now the past and the future is getting ready to be the present. So all we have is right now. So I'm asking you to just go back and keep up, catch up so you can keep up. So I am going to the next slide, which is slide 13. The cure to endure is hidden in the word. How do we endure? So how, how do we do this thing that we talked about last week? How do we continue? How do we last? How do we tarry? How do we bear under hardship? How do we survive under persecution? Well, guess what? The apostles had that same question now down to 11 because Jesus is getting ready to go back. And the way he's headed, he, he's been betrayed. So he's headed to um, Golgotha. And he starts foretelling the destruction of the temple, but he's really talking about the end of the world that in the 21st century we're experiencing. So catch up so you can keep up. Matthew 24, Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. So Jesus looked at Jerusalem for the last time before he was crucified. He looked back at this physical temple. Get, make sure you're in Wednesday night Bible studies because we're talking about a temple now that has been rebuilt multiple times because of the kings and because of the processes. And we're covering all of this for you. Jesus, where, where we're at now is Jesus is leaving the temple and he's looking at it and he's saying, hey, you know what? I'm headed up. I'm headed to Golgotha. I'm getting ready to go. And his disciples said, wait, look, look back. Look back at the temple. Look, look at what we're leaving Jesus. This was important because they were saying, don't you know this is our symbol? This is our rock. This is what we built our denomination on. You got to turn and you got to swear by the temple. You got to, because if you don't, that's like blasphemy. Jesus did it because the disciples were attempting to get Jesus to do something similar to what happened to Lot's wife and have him look back because it was the center of Jewish life. And sometimes the enemy wants us to look back at the center of what has been our natural life. Our natural lives can cause us to want to look back when the Lord is telling us to look forward. So Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem. And even as to, to these as this point says, Jesus foretells the destruction of Jerusalem and even as to men in general, not just the destruction of Jerusalem, but the destruction of people in general until the end of the world. So it's important for us to look at Matthew 24 because it's speaking to us today. And this is the last time that Jesus would be at the temple in his earthly ministry, that he would be here before his crucifixion. This was the last time. There was a real temple. It was literally destroyed. So that prophecy has been fulfilled. But Jesus looked at it. And said, Come. Jesus left it. He was going away. And his disciples said, wait, turn around. And he said, no. But what he did do. And our next slide, he said, Sat and talked to them, and he talked to them about the signs of the end of the age on slide 14. He said, Okay, I'm gonna sit at Mount Olives. So at Mount Olives, he was able to sit there and still see the temple and have a private conversation with his chosen. So he was able to see it without looking back at it. That that's just for a few specific folks that can understand that. There are times when the Lord will put you in a position to see something without you having to look back at it. So be able to see your past without looking back at it because the Lord can show it to you 
and give you the significance of it in your life without you being bound by the sting of sin and death. As he sat at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and they said, okay, will you tell us when these things are going to be and what the sign of your coming is going to be and what the end of the age is going to be? Okay, that could have been three questions, but we see kind of as four, as two. I'm taking it as two questions where they said, can you tell us when this stuff is going to happen that you're talking about? And can you give us a sign so that we know when it's coming? Because we don't want to be caught off guard. Well, the thing about it is, if we're not caught off guard and we know when, then that also gives us opportunity to not do right until we almost at that time. So it's very interesting how we end up being dealt with as the people of God. Jesus' answer to their question. So this is the key important part to today's message. Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Those are the two questions. One he's going to answer, one he isn't. And what Jesus said to them is, see that don't nobody lead you astray. Okay, that ain't a bit more what they asked Jesus, but his answer was, don't be led astray. So whatever I'm getting ready to tell you, stay safe. The enemy trying to get into how you're seeing the, the slides and stuff. Don't be led astray. Don't be led astray. We working on it. We figuring it out. The, the slides are going to be posted. So you can listen to me because I, I am all, I'm, I'm slide reading. So the good news is it's all, everything I'm saying is really already there for you. So this is what Jesus told him in verse five. He said, many are going to come in my name. And here's what they're going to say. They're going to say, I am the Christ. And they're going to lead many astray. So they're going to have the ability to lead a whole bunch of people astray. You're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you don't get alarmed because of that. For this has to take place. But it ain't going to be the end when the wars and rumors of war. So we ain't at the end yet. They saw it then. We're seeing it 21 centuries later. For nations are going to rise against nations, kingdom against kingdoms. We're seeing that. They saw that. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. They saw that. We see that. And then Jesus said, and all this is the beginning of the birth pains. So uh, the points that I have for you on this slide are, he moved from the temple and sat on the Mount of Olives, where he could still overlook the temple. The two questions posed, one was answered. When will these things be? Don't get an answer. What will be the sign of your coming? He gets that in detail, which I'm going to give you. So these were reasonable questions. These weren't unreasonable questions. But guess what, saints? Reasonable questions don't always require an answer. And that is on slide 15. Reasonable questions don't always require an answer. Jesus's initial response was for the disciples to not be led astray. Church, don't be led astray because many are going to come in his name, in my name, and many are going to be led astray with the people that come in my name. And they're not even going to be you all. They're not even going to be my chosen. They're not even going to be my disciples. They're not even going to be my followers. They're just going to come in my name and people are going to believe them because they come in my name. Don't be led astray. He foretells of things that they will witness, but he also says, don't be alarmed. Don't panic. Don't be anxious. All of this has to happen before the end comes. The water ain't even broke yet. The, the woman that's in labor, her water ain't even broke yet. The labor pains have just begun. Women, those of you who have children, you know what it's like at the beginning if you have the father in the room at the very beginning of labor, it don't even look like it's going to be that hard. That's when you be hearing, oh, you act like this. I could, I could go through this. It seems like labor and delivery ain't going to be bad at all. Oh, but when that water breaks, let me tell you something. You start having some different kind of pains and you know that before it's over, something's going to happen. Something's going to be delivered. 
So he went on to say, and then they're going to deliver you up. They're going to deliver you up to tribulation and they're going to kill you. Okay, you're on your way to the cross. We're trying to figure out when the end going to come. You done told us to, to don't go astray and keep believing, but you're really not giving us a lot of good news here, Jesus. As we look at slide 16, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and they're going to put you to death and you'll be hated by all the nations for my name's sake. Okay, so those are the benefits of being a Christian. How many of us right now feel like, oh, those are the benefits of being a Christian, being hated, being put to death, going through tribulation, being hated by nations because we believe in Jesus, because we believe on Jesus. Yep. And then many are going to fall away. And guess what believers are going to start doing? They're going to start betraying one another. They're going to start hating one another even though they have followed me. And guess what? False prophets are going to come and arise and lead many astray. A side note on this is why the Lord said to me, stop being afraid that uh, of what I'm saying to you. Stop being afraid of who I have called you to be. I need real prophets because there are going to be false prophets. And if everybody is afraid to say they're a prophet because of the contemporariness of the 21st century, then nobody's going to know when the false prophets come because the real prophets are afraid to say they're prophets. Uh, case in point, Elder Weekly this past week said he's been suffering with something for seven years. His A1C is in the public domain posted. You can see his testimony. But then this, seven years later, this week before, last week before he went to the doctor, he said, I am going to speak. And it was a prophetical speaking that when I go and get my blood work, that this time after seven years, my A1C is going to be below seven because I want the same testimony as a marriage to see about it. And he spoke it. And I want you to know, he said that they delayed it. Looked like it wasn't going to happen. But by the time we got to our service this week and we were ready and we had testimonies on Friday, Elder Reedley got on there and he started singing, I got a testimony. As soon as he said that, I knew I said, oh, that A1C is under seven. Because... He was willing to speak it before it happened. And guess what? It happened. After seven years, it happened. Therefore, that position of saying, uh, what if it doesn't happen? Well, Jesus is saying these false prophets, they're not afraid to tell you what's going to happen. They're not afraid to predict your future. They're not afraid to read a Torah card. They're not afraid to read your horoscope. They're not afraid to take your sign and tell you what's going to happen because of the month that you were born. I need people who are real prophets and prophetesses and that are not ashamed, not because, because they've been given a bad rap. Let's just, let's just be real. It's some bad ones out there. It's some bad ones that's people of color. It's some bad ones that's sanctified. It's some bad ones that's in the holiness church, all that stuff. They, they, they are not real. But what that has done is silence the few of us who are. And Jesus said, here, it's going to be a bunch of false prophets, and they're going to lead a bunch of folks astray. Here is an answer, a critical answer, because lawlessness will be increased. The love of many will grow cold. So answer, Jesus, how come this stuff is going to happen? Not when, but why? Because lawlessness will be increased. The love of many will grow cold. Will grow cold, not old, cold. The thought of Jesus' followers, those who walked and talked with him on the earth, would even have to consider being delivered into the hands of tribulation. That's almost inconceivable. It's difficult to believe that the enemy will have that level of drawing away power 
That's not coming. He decided to come to service today because he's toothless. He's full of flaws. But you still got people that are going to listen to him instead of listening to the truth. That drawing away isn't because we don't have power over all of his power. It's when we allow our power to become impotent in his presence. It's not because the enemy gets more power. Come on, somebody. The enemy never gets more power. We Amen. just relinquish our power so that the enemy then shines. It's difficult to believe that he would have that level of drawing away power. But now he says, not only will many fall away, but his own are gonna start betraying each other. Each other. Are we betraying each other? And not only betrayal, but hatred. Are we hating each other? The works of the flesh are replacing the fruit of the spirit. How can this happen? You stay right where we're at. On this slide, it's good. This is where I'm coming to. How, how can this happen? How can this happen? Same scriptures. Many false prophets. Jesus doesn't deny them as prophets. He said they're false. He just labels them as false. Witchery is still real. It is still, sorcery is still real. You can still pay, you can still pay and you can dial up numbers where you can have somebody read your palm. Necromancy is real. There are show, television shows, whatever, if it ain't considered TV, app, you can still watch shows where people will seance, they'll Ouija board you. They will necromance, meaning they will call forth the spirits from the dead. That is happening right now. But that's false. It's not that it's not happening. It's just that it is false. So we have to know who we're going to, to get the information. Because you can get information. You can, you, can, you can buy a book of numbers that'll tell you what to play for the lottery and never win. So it's not that the information isn't there. It's that we have to know whether or not it's real. Despite the amount of truth that has been preached, and I'm preaching truth right now, they will be able to lead many astray. Jesus told him this way back then. And here's something I know many of you are, you're hearing a lot about this right now, and it's true, and we're going to be focused on it. And many of you have already heard about this. In the 21st century, we will have 11 more opportunities to experience the 21st day of the 21st year in the 21st century. The last one was a week ago Thursday on the 21st. Every month in 2021, this particular year, and it's so interesting how God has told us to focus on the number 12. Again, you got to catch up to keep up. I can't go there. We're going to be studying, continuing to, dis to study that number of divine authority and government and government and governance. We're going to continue to study that. And the inverse, we're in the 21st century as we look at the number 12. And it is only in this year, in this year, every month, we will experience a 21st day in the 21st year of the 21st century. Every month of this year. So now that raises curiosity. And for false prophets, it's a platform for lucrativeness because many people are being drawn away. People, people are already taking their tax money, getting loans on it before they get it back, taking their stimulus checks and not paying tithes, not, not sowing seed into ministry because they want to know what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen on the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century to me in February, in March, in April. I'm coming to tell you it's false. 
because lawlessness, iniquity, they're all going to surpass love. This is basic cause and effect. But the miraculous part is that every generation has experienced what we're experiencing. Every generation from the time that Jesus spoke this experienced this truth. Every generation. So we're not experiencing a truth that has not been experienced ever since they were looking at the temple from the Mount of Olives. Very basic cause and effect. So the only thing I did is I wanted to show you in these next couple of slides is however we look at this, however we look at verse 12, lawlessness will be increased and the love of many will, will wax cold. I gave you 26 different versions. It doesn't matter because of the increase of wickedness. Sin will be rampant everywhere because the lawlessness will be increased, because of the multiplication of wickedness, because lawlessness will be multiplied, because iniquity abound, because lawlessness abound, because lawlessness is increased, because lawlessness is increased, because lawlessness will multiply. We go to the next slide. Because iniquity is multiplied, because iniquity abound, evil will spread and cause many people to stop loving others. So the point here is look up, look at whatever version you want to. Why? Why? The answer to why. Why is this happening, church? Why are we experiencing the things that we're experiencing in our generation? Why? The answer to why has been answered. Go, it's already, we've been told that. Matthew 24, verse 12. Every time you say, why? Go back to Matthew 24, verse 12. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of many will grow cold. That is the answer to the why, no matter what, how you look at it. The power and the impotence of the earthen vessel. Do you all hear me? The impotence, that means lack of power. So the power of the earthen vessel and the lack of power of the earthen vessel keeps this impenetrable stuff out of us. So because our bodies are powerful, COVID don't just jump on us and get in us. Cancer don't just jump on us and get in us. Some of us suffer from those things, but it's not because when we go outside, just every bug that's outside jumps on us and gets in us. No, because our skin is the biggest organ of our body and it protects us and it keeps a whole bunch of stuff out of us. But just like water on a rock, a drop of water can keep hitting a rock. If, that, if it's one drop of water over years, you'll come and that rock will start having a little curve in it. That rock will start getting eaten away by one drop of water. It's not necessarily by a whole whoosh, but it can just be a drop at a time, a drop at a time. And that's what we have to be mindful of, saints. It's not the enemy always coming to us who aren't doing those things that I talked about at the beginning because of 25 years I ain't worried about. It's those little drops, those little drops of water and then what happens is they ooze inside the vessel and then the heart goes from being a heart of flesh to a heart of stone. This is the fatal outcome of the cares of this world choking out the word. It's when that earthen vessel just keep on tapping it, keep on tapping it. And then next thing you know, the enemy that got inside where we have been able to keep them on the outside. So two things. One, guard our heart, Luke 21 through 34. Three versions. Watch yourselves, lest your heart get weighed down with dissipation. Your heart gets weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And then the day that Jesus comes, is going to come like a trap and you're not going to be ready. Take heed at yourself, lest at any time, at any time, your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. 
so that that day of Christ come on you unaware. Amplified, I like it, said, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down and depressed with the giddiness of debauchery and the nausea of self-indulgence and the worldly worries of life. And then that day when the Messiah returns won't come on you suddenly like a trap. Guarding your heart is so important, saints. Some of you are in situations where you feel like you're having a massive heart attack all the time because you're unequally yoked. You're trying to get the worldly gain and trying to live saved. You're trying to be called and chosen. You're trying to be saved and unsaved all at the same time. And it's impacting your heart and you feel it. You're uncomfortable while I'm preaching. Because your heart is exposed and the impotence, the powerlessness of your flesh is starting to seep into your heart. I don't care what it is. Get out. Stop it right now. It's not worth it. Or start whatever the Lord is telling you. Same exact thing, but now Mark 4 and 14 is the result of the seed that was sown among thorns. If we look at the parable of the sower, those same three versions, the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, of riches and the desires for other things, they come in, they choke out the word, and then it's unfruitful. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke out the word, becomes unfruitful. The Amplified again, but the worries and cares of the world, the distractions of this age, with its worldly pleasures, because the world has pleasures. Don't say, ain't no pleasures in the world. Don't, don't be praying over people telling them ain't no pleasures in the world. The word says it's pleasures in the world. The thing is, we have to not want the pleasures of the world. We have to not want that more than we want the pleasures of the world. So we have to want holiness and not want the pleasures of the world. We got to get there. Otherwise, in this world, there are pleasures and deceitfulness, and there is a false sense of security and glamour of wealth, of fame, and the passionate desires for all the other things. They creep in, they choke out the word, and the word becomes unfruitful. Aligning with the nine is important as we look at the Holy Ghost, but how can, the, the question was asked, Elder Hillier preached so good last night. You have to go and listen to that and listen to all of them. It's just, we, just, we have had so many great, we've had 12 phenomenal messages just on the fruit of the spirit. How does this happen? It happens when we are willing to gamble the treasure in our earthen vessel against the pleasures of the world. That's how it happens. So then is anybody going to be saved? Is anybody going to make it? Because this dismal story, Dr. Bowers, we tired now. It's no outside if we in Wisconsin, if we in Illinois, if we in this northern region. Now give us some good news. Well, I've been giving you good news from the beginning. Now, when we look at slide 22, what the word says, that what Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, he said, the one who endures to the end shall be saved, will be saved. We got to have somebody who's willing to know that the past, that was their present, the future is now their present, so they're going to just stick to it. They're going to keep doing it. They're going to stay saved no matter what. They're going to pay their tithe. They're going to pay their offering. They're going to show up for service. They're going to pray. They're going to intercede. They're going to fast. They're going to supplicate. They're going to meditate. They're going to do it. They're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness when they sit. They're going to call on the elders and get anointed. They're going to do what the Bible said do. They're going to follow the word. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. They're going to do it because the one that endures to the end will be saved. For the gospel this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony before the end gonna come. But then after it is, the end gonna come. But what are you doing? What am I doing? We doing, we doing this. We staying, we staying on beat. We staying on point. We staying in sync. 
Because when we do that, you're going to see a point coming up. You ain't got to worry about when the end comes. Because whenever the end comes, I'm going to be found doing right. Whenever the end comes, I'm going to be found thinking right. Whenever the end comes, I'm going to be found shouting. I'm going to be found praising. I'm going to be found worshiping. I'm going to be found praying for somebody. I'm going to be found when I'm cooking, I'm singing the old hymns. When I'm when the salt and when my food is salty because of the tears that fell from my eyes that went in the pot while I was stirring it, I'm going to still be getting the healing ministry of Jesus Christ in my soul. Because if we endure to the end, we're going to be saved. So is there any hope? Of course there's hope because God is still a God of mercy. He's still a God of grace. He's still a God of truth and his truth will prevail. So where is our hope? Our hope is the one who knows how to wait on the end by enduring, by having that long suffering, by having that temperance, by managing the nine. So it's a critical question. That next critical question, when is it then, Lord? It's as critical of a question, but guess what? Jesus didn't answer it. Because the focus is living in a way that the end is meaningless. Oh, my Lord. I, I get chills whenever when I type that. It gave me chills. This is the first day that I'm in the hospital and the Holy Ghost gave me all of this. Saints, do you all, I, I'm not talking about a message that I put together last night. I'm talking about when I was in a point to where I had five IV poles at one time and 12 different things going in my body when they told me that I had lived a good life and that I needed to accept it. God was, was speaking through me to be able to speak to you and say, listen, don't worry about the end. When the end comes, it's meaningless. As long as you endure, just tell them, don't worry about the end. Focus on enduring. Oh, glory to God. I know this is a hard, bitter pill. And I know that it's, 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 we're, we're looking at this. Just go look at the slides. Again, don't be distracted. It's a hard, bitter pill, and it's being rejected by some of you right now, but it remains the gospel truth. As long as the gospel of the kingdom is being proclaimed, we still on the kingdom payroll. Somebody, hallelujah, glory to God. We still on the kingdom payroll. Put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. Payday, payday, payday is coming after a while. You still on the kingdom's payroll. If we are committed and engaged in proclaiming the gospel throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, God is still our provider and he's still the one that's funding our paycheck. When that directive is met, then the end is going to come. You ain't got no pink slip yet. You ain't got laid off yet. You ain't lost your job yet. Keep on living right. Let that savor. So now I'm asking you to scan your own personal hard drive and accept your current truth, whatever it is, and then adjust because it's time to adjust because you're still on the payroll. Put your time in. Payday is coming after a while. But the enemy wants you to think that you've been laid off. So you somewhere ain't showing up. No call, no show. Stop being a no call, no show in your saved life. Stop being a no call, no show because you ain't got a title. Stop being a no-call, no-show because you ain't got an appointment. You ain't got an anointing, an appointment, or an installation. Amen, Bible study. Come to Bible study. Catch up so you can keep up. That's because you say, I ain't got no anointing like y'all. I ain't got no appointment like y'all. I ain't got no installation like y'all. Keep on showing up and doing the work. Put your time in. You have not been laid off yet. You have not lost your job yet. The economy has not taken away the word of God from your soul. The president don't have the authority to remove salvation from your spirit. There is no United Nations that can make you backslide. There is no power anywhere in the constellations where there are satellites in the air and people are counting the stars. And whatever month you were born and whatever your zodiac is and however much you use to, pay, to play the lottery and whatever your lucky numbers are and whatever Confucius said and however confused you've been by Buddha, I want you to know that you still on the kingdom payroll. 
Keep putting your time in because every second of every day, your, your present has become past. Your future has become present. So you must endure until the end because all that matters is now. All that matters is now. And the Lord said, I'm still paying you. Oh, am I talking to anybody that's on the kingdom payroll this morning? I want to get you past what you need to say. I'm about to tell them to just take the screen off because I don't want you to be distracted. Because the further part of the next aspect of Matthew 24, it's, 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 it's some other things in there that I'm not going to get into. I just want to point out a couple of things in these verses because I, I understand what time is doing. I ain't worried about that either so much and so because I'm in the now right now and I'm in the anointing. Hey, I'm in the anointing right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving me confirmation so I can take a deep breath and, and do what you done told me to do because I understand. He's saying, no, uh-uh, do what I told you, just like they was trying to get me to look back, just like they were trying to get me to answer the question. No, I gave this to you when you were weak so that when I gave you strength, I could speak through you like I did then. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking through you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So he said, when you go to Matthew 24 and be like Elder James, he said, if you log off, I ain't going to be offended. I ain't, but the Holy Ghost might be. Don't, don't disrupt the grace of God. Don't be worried about me. I'm just, I'm just the servant. But I do want to say in this, a couple of verses, like down in 21, it says, and if these days had not been cut short, no human would be saved. I'm not going in the background part of that. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. I want to note that. And then in verse 24, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders. Do you hear what the word of God said in verse 24? False Christs, false prophets are going to arise. Okay, it's all right that they arise. But this is the, this is the problem. The problem ain't that they're going to show up. The problem is that they're going to do great signs and wonders. That's the problem. The problem ain't that, that they're going to show up. The problem is that some of y'all waiting to hang up with me and sign on with Miss Cleo. I can say that because I know that she did now. So don't, if you do, if you call her up, that's necromancy because she's going on. But you could call, some of y'all want to hang up with Vessels of Honor this morning with Dr. Bowers because God then gave me a little bit of strength to deliver this word to you. But some of you want to get to the great signs and wonders because I ain't giving you the great signs and wonders. So the thing is, false prophets are going to show up. False Christs are going to show up. And they're going to have great signs and wonders. They're going to say, you got a mole on your big toe and it came when you was 12 and you went to the hospital and you had surgery to get rid of your six finger and 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 when you're you had a double earlobe and when you went when you were 14 they took it and you guess how do you know that Ooh, the reason they know it. why do they know it get in your work get on kingdom payroll some of y'all down in the basement ain't getting your check because you somewhere mopping up and the lord said i done mopped up i, I done mopped up i done cleaned you up come on here now somebody i'm trying to tell you what the holy ghost telling you you on a payroll getting paid luxurious pay, acting like you in the soup line. You ain't at the rescue mission of the reserve that ain't saved. You on the kingdom payroll so that when these folks come that are false Christ and false teachers and they're coming with great signs and wonders and they know your name and they know your grandmama name and they know your lineage and you done been woo you wild by them. Now you done gave your kingdom check to the mm -hmm. false prophet, to the false Christ. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. If it's the last message I preach, I'm going to preach it because the Lord gave it to me. He said they're going to come and they're coming with great signs and wonders and they're going to lead you astray. And if it was possible, they would even lead astray the very elect. And you know who that is. That's me laying in the hospital. Lead me away when the Holy Ghost say, can I speak through you and not to you? Or can you live and not die? Can I put new sinew in your bones when they telling you, well, you've had a good life. If you don't make it, Dr. Bauer, you've made a great contribution. People are going to remember you for what I, Satan, shut up. Shut up. Silence the devil. You ain't giving me no check. You ain't paying my life bill. You ain't paying my Holy Ghost mortgage. You, I'm talking about your Holy Ghost mortgage. I'm talking about the mortgage of your earth and vessel. Somebody paying that earth and vessel.
vessel mortar that I want you to know it's the kingdom. I want you to know somebody is paying the oil that's inside the earthen vessel. Somebody paying that mortgage. Come on, somebody. Somebody is paying that mortgage. You know who's paying it? God's paying it. So some of us getting benefits. We getting government benefits. And the government that's benefiting us is the government of the kingdom of God. We getting government benefits and we selling our food stamps and we going hungry because we don't believe in the institution of Jesus Christ, the living, the son of the living God. So we'll sell somebody when he comes to feed us food and we'll let somebody come and get our food stamp card that came from the kingdom. And we'll tell them, listen, I got a hundred dollars on here, but I'll give you 200 if you give me $50, I'll give you the $100. So now we wonder how does it happen? Because the love, because of lawlessness, the love of many is wax cold. We're willing to sell the food and the fruit and the, and the drink of the kingdom for pennies. Oh, are you selling your soul today? Holy Ghost, have your way here now. I tell you, he said, that they're going to come and they're going to do great signs and wonders. So you're going to win sometimes. Sometimes your number going to hit. You hear what I say? Sometimes you're going to win the lottery. Sometimes the enemy going to come and they're going to pay off your bills. Sometimes you're going to get a paycheck that was written in the blood and it wasn't the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Some of you know what I'm talking about right now. Some of you sitting and, you, and you're giving your money, still giving your money to, to the alcohol and to the, to the soothsayer. Because I really don't want to be dealing with the, the, the typical stuff that you always hear folks preaching about shacking and, and, and lying and drinking and, and smoking. We know all about that. I, I want to get into this witchcraft. Because see, this witchcraft has got a lot of people caught up. And it's a whole bunch of y'all wearing stuff around your neck thinking something's going to happen. I got stuff on my neck and ain't none of them got no power. But I want you to know, some of you wearing rings that if the ring come off, you say you're you going to have bad luck. Some of you say, oh, if I, if I walk around this way, then that mean, then I'm going to end up getting sick. That is a lie. The truth is not in that. that is, but the great wonder is that the enemy will trick you into being in a position to where you'll be seeing all this stuff happening. All these great people and some of them behind the pulpit, y'all. All of them ain't out in the street. All of them ain't in the tavern. That's how come I want to get up off of that. Most of them are standing behind a pulpit. Somebody, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I am the only five call ministry person up in here today. I want you to know that most of them, according to Jesus Christ, are false Christ and false prophets. These ain't folks driving around these raggedy station wagons with signs and horn, boom, 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 Jesus is in the coming. That, no, these are folks that got stuff. They got stuff. And they got stuff that you want. And if your earthen vessel remains in charge, you're going to take your kingdom check. And you're going to take your kingdom goods. And you're going to give them to the individuals that are soothing your earthen vessel. Woo. And, and in verses 25, 26, 27, 28, all I want to do is say 28 because Jesus also told him, I already told you, but look, I have told you what to look for and what not to look for. You keep asking me when, I ain't going to answer when because when don't matter. Is anybody on the when don't matter train yet? Because I, I can get, I, I'm, I'm about to be to the end. But has anybody, do anybody understand yet that you got to get off of the when is it going to happen train? As long as you're getting a check, get off of the when is it going to happen train? Because your present is your past, your future is your present, all you got is right now. Then Jesus said, look where the corpse lies, that's where the vultures going to gather. In other words, when judgment is found, the punishment going to be there. Don't worry about the enemy. Because when the enemy is done, the vulture's going to come and eat him up. So then he said, look, right after the tribulation, so we hope we're going to be gone, but just for those who listened to, for verse 29, 30, and 31, we hope that we rapture by now. But Christ's initial telling of these times, we trust that whatever, whatever Jesus says, we got to believe it. So I want to say this it, at a kingdom level. 
the attack of the legislative, judicial, and executive base of our own country to fit into many of these statements that Jesus made. Stop talking about, yeah, but the United States is still the best country. No, it ain't. The, the kingdom of heaven is. So stop worrying about being a U.S. citizen and make sure you're still a kingdom citizen. you just passing through here. Your check, I don't care who's signing. I don't care how many stimulus checks you get. Your payroll is funded by the kingdom of God. Somebody shout glory and say amen. You know what I'm saying. Just as those listening, those disciples could only imagine incident and situation that could cause a pause to say, has this time come? How near must we be to this time? Where will I be when the time comes? What if today is that day? What if it is? What if it is? So here's a lesson from a fig tree. I am going to read these verses, 32 through 35. From the fig tree, learn, learn this. As soon as its branches become tender, put out its leaves, you know that summer's come. Also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near and at the very gate. So I say to you, this generation ain't going to pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but my words ain't going to pass away. So the fig was a very common fruit. And when the leaves appeared on a fig tree, everybody knew summer was about to come. So don't act like you don't know nothing. He said, you want me to answer when? Stop acting like you don't know because I'm giving you the signs of the time. Once the, you saw the leaves, you didn't see the fig yet. But when you saw the leaves on the tree, you knew that summer was coming. Come on now. In two days, it's going to be Groundhog Day. A bunch of folks going to be looking at that groundhog, that same one they've been feeding, that same one when children go hungry and they feeding the groundhog to see if the groundhog see a shadow when they could be feeding babies, when they could be housing homeless but they're going to be standing there like they're somewhere back in the 17th century and they're going to say, did the groundhog see a shadow? I don't care if the groundhog see a shadow or not. I got payroll from the kingdom. Can somebody get into the accounts payable department? Can somebody get into accounts receivable up in here? Because I got a paycheck that's funded and it ain't funded by the groundhog. Whether he see a shadow or not, when the leaves come on the tree, you ought to know the summer is coming. So if you see these signs are coming, then you ought to know that Jesus is on his way back. So we need to have the assurance that Jesus is coming. So when you see the leaves, saints, when you see the leaves, saints, the fruit is on its way. He's coming back. So now back to the unanswered question. When, 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 when? Here's what I love. I can't, I can't finish preaching this without doing this because this is critical to what I'm telling you before Jesus was crucified. <clears throat> they said, he said, but concerning the day and hour, let me get on back to the when it's going to happen. So Jesus still looking at the temple on the Mount of Olives. He said in verse 36, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the son. Somebody need to catch that, but the father only. So is Jesus really saying there's something that he don't know? In his earthly ministry, he remained theantropic and he stood in his anthros, in his man. He stood as a human. He stood as a human with the sins of the world all up on him and yet remained without sin. But as a human, he said, the father knows I don't know. And I know that he said, Brenda, I don't know. Once he took me and I was sitting across from him, he said, will you go back? You got a mansion prepared for you and you can go to your mansion right now. And I'm going to say, well done, that good and faithful servant. But what I really want you to do is something that I can't do. Will you go back? Because I don't know when my daddy going to tell me to go get his bride. But I do know that he's getting lonely and he's allowed time to extend itself. And hell has enlarged itself. But grace has also enlarged herself. But there's going to come a time when my daddy's going to say, go get my bride. And, and go and get his bride. That's who you are, in case you didn't know. The body of Christ is the bride of Christ, and Jesus coming back. And he said, and I don't know when he's going to tell me. But what I do know is that I want the bride to be made up of as many souls as possible. So he said, even I don't know. Y'all want to know when it's going to happen. I can't tell you when. But what I can tell you is the way that you assure your ending is to endure. I'm saying it again. You need to know right now before I started preaching that everything that I said is now past. And everything that 
that I'm getting ready to say is going to be present because the future is only as good as the present and the present is only as good as the past. Somebody need to catch what I'm saying here today because the Holy Ghost is preaching. Somebody been listening three hours but won't listen one hour to the prophet. Won't listen one hour to the apostle. Won't listen an hour and a half to the evangelist, to the pastor, to the teacher. Oh, but I want you to know that the pneuma that's inside of me, it ain't guaranteed it could have been gone, should have been gone. Somebody know what it means to woulda, shoulda, coulda. And I want you to know that Jesus said, I don't know when he going to tell me to come get his bride. But when he does, I'm coming. But can you help me while you on the payroll to crusade and revive and get this bride bigger than she is? Woo. Then he said, I'm going to give you a historic example. Just like Noah, he had preached all that time. They didn't think it was going to rain either, but it did. That's all I'm going to say about that page. And then and when you look at 40 verses 40, 41, and 42, I just want to do 42. Therefore, stay awake. Look at what he said. You want to know when it's going to happen? Stay woke. Because you don't know the day and hour that your Lord is coming. I'm getting ready to go up to Golgotha. And y'all trying to see what's going to happen. And I ain't even gone yet. Ain't that how it go? The parents trying to give you some instruction. And you trying to find out what's going to go on after they gone. He, he was still there. He was still with them. He said, look now. I ain't gone yet. I'm about to walk on up to this hill and y'all ain't going to help me carry my cross, but I'm still going to put in your time card. I'm still going to sign your time sheet, even though you ain't carrying the cross, even though you ain't going to be at the foot of the cross, even though you ain't going to go where they buried me, even though you ain't going to be there where they resurrect me, even though I'm going to have to come and find you and pull you together to tell you to go up to the upper room, I'm still going to sign your time card even though you ain't been working in your virtual environment, supposed to be working eight hours and been working 30 minutes, I'm still going to sign your time card, somebody, because you're on the kingdom payroll. Stay woke. You don't know when he's going to come. So before, before Ann Muldrow, before Erica Badu, and even before William Melvin Kelly in 1962, Jesus said, stay woke. Mm. That goes beyond. If you woke, you can dig it. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was around in the 60s. We were staying woke then. That ain't nothing new. Being woke is a determining factor for remaining alive. The reason you got to be woke is you got to be alive in order to enter eternal life. You ain't trying to enter no eternal sleep. Stop letting the devil tell you you so tired you ready to go to sleep. You ready to be done with this life so you can get some rest. Stop that lie. I curse it at the root right now. Ain't no figs on that tree because the enemy wants you to get tired of doing this. He wants you to get tired of church. He wants you to get tired of the word. He wants, yeah, but I got to go to work anymore. You know that show us some long preaching because you know people got to get out and shovel their snow. Go shovel your snow. If you ain't got time to listen to me preach, go shovel your snow. Hang up. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't signing your check. And let me tell you something. Be glad that you got a God that will still pay you when you check out. How many times have you punched out early? How many times have you never punched in? How many times have you taken a lunch that was longer than you deserve? And then when he said, can you sit a little while and be taught? When they said that the Paul had preached so long, the man fell, broke his neck. He said, get up, man. I ain't done preaching to you. When John was on the Isle of Patmos, starting his day, God said, look, I ain't done with you. Wake up. I'm telling you something here today, church. If I'll never preach to you again, I'm telling you, you on the kingdom payroll. And Jesus is telling you today, wake up and stop getting so tired that you praying for sleep. I ain't talking about insomnia now. I'm talking about where you just want to rest. You just so tired of this way. You just so tired of the devil. You just so tired of having a job. You just so tired of having kids. You just so tired of having a house. You just so tired of having a car. You just so tired. You tired of being tired of being tired. But you tired of yourself. But you still want God to send you a paycheck. You want him to send you that wake up paycheck, don't you? As sleep and tired as you are. You ain't so, so sleep and tired that you don't want him to send you that payroll check that say, wake up. You want that payroll check. You want them fringe benefits. You want them get woke benefits. But he telling you to stay woke. Because the benefit, see, you ain't 
use it like this, like this HSA. He done put some money on your car. He done put some money on your car so you can stay woke and you ain't even using it. You somewhere praying for to, to rest. Oh, life is so hard. Life is so tired. God, when is you going to take this away? Okay, you ready to get up off that payroll? No, you still want your check. Just don't want to work for it. He said, no, you working for this check. You working for this check. Saints, we got to work for this check. Dr. Bowers working for her check. Let me tell you, I'm working because I was there. I was right there. And I said, look, show have. Life been good. That's the first thing I said. See, I told you when I, when I rebuked him. But before I rebuked him, I said, I'm tired now. I'm tired of telling my husband that I'm going to try again. I don't want to try no more. I'm sick of this now. I, now. Now I'm sick of all this pain. I'm sick of all this stuff that's going on. I'm sick of people seeing me for a few minutes thinking that I'm doing good. And I'm laid out for all the rest of the day. I'm tired, Lord. And then he showed me if he took me off the payroll, what that would look like. Then all of a sudden, I got a little more strength. I said, yeah, you can talk through me and not to me, show can. Uh-huh, because let me tell you something. If he revealed to you what life is when he take you off of his payroll, let me give you two words, hell and damnation, and you don't want either one. No, you don't. You don't want to be damned to hell, and you don't want to get in hell and be damned. You done two things you don't want. It's hell and damn. And that, and you get both of them when you get them off, off that payroll. What you want is heaven and blessing. Yeah, uh-huh. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. I'm getting out of here. Don't worry about me. When the anointing go, God got me. Don't worry about it. Are you woke yet? Are you woke yet? He who has to come was speaking to those who remain. The same Jesus that had to come back took time to talk to the people in, in his humanity and told them to get ready. So the end again becomes less relevant because the continual perfect present tense living is all that is important. Some of y'all got to start living. You've been getting a check. You've been getting a check and you ain't been showing up, but he letting you see, he telling you today you can show up. This requires a kingdom collaborative character. The last point I have on here, you might not be able to see it, so let me tell it to you. Whether you voting, whether you protesting, whether you lobbying, whether you advocating, whether you being an activist, we always function from a kingdom independent registered citizenship status. Whatever anybody say to you, I don't care how black you are, I don't care how white you are, I don't care how brown or yellow you are, but I want you to know is that you are a kingdom independent registered citizen. Do you hear what I say? When you vote, when you lobby, when you march, when you protest, when you advocate, when you activate, you are never doing it from the platform of the benefit of your vessel. Don't ever let your earthen vessel put you in a position to where your oil can speak. You always a kingdom independent registered citizen. Stop worrying about the Democrats. Stop worrying about the Republicans. Stop worrying about the Tea Party. Stop worrying about when is there ever going to be a party. Because whatever the party is, every, folks already talking about what they don't like about Biden. Don't worry about it. You ain't you ain't so caught up to where the, the, the capital is where your check coming from. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? Stop voting like you're a Republican. Stop voting like you a Democrat. Oh, don't say that. I'm telling you I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. And the Lord said, stop waiting on the party and get in the party because the party is in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost party don't ever stop because it's always funded. Ain't ever no last call for holiness. Ain't no last round because the Holy Ghost is funded by the kingdom and the Holy Ghost is in you. So the funding from the kingdom flows through the people of God who are kingdom citizens. Well, glory to his name, whoever don't like it. Blessed is the servant who will find, who his master will find so doing when he comes. So what you going to be doing when he comes? I'm getting out of here in a few minutes. What you going to be doing? What you doing now? I'm going to ask you what you going to be doing when he, when he comes, but what you doing now? What you hope to stop doing? What you hope to start doing? We've been asking you that. Are you among those that he can say is a blessed servant? He said, blessed is the servant who the master will find doing. 
be found so doing. And in verse 47, he said, truly I say to you, that blessed servant, this is important, he will set him over all his possessions. I told y'all you won't stay on that payroll. I told you better stop getting so tired and sleepy and sleepy and tired. And, and you know, oh, I just had to take me a break. Oh, I just got to get myself together. Oh, you know, I just needed to go somewhere by myself and, and get my head clear. I got to figure out life. I got to figure out how to do me. You ain't never going to figure none of that out. And stop wanting the kingdom to keep paying you to figure yourself out. You ain't ever going to figure yourself out. The kingdom made you so the kingdom know what you need. The kingdom know what you're going through. The kingdom know where you've been. The kingdom know where you're going. So let me tell you something. If you want to be the blessed servant, let me tell you the best benefit of the blessed servant. The blessed servant, whoo, can somebody look at Matthew 24, verse 47? Truly I say to you, he going to set him over all his possessions. God is going to trust you with his stuff. If you can endure, if you can endure and stop being so focused on the ending and stop being so focused on how bad things are right now, he, you ain't just going to be blessed, saints. He's going to put you on all his stuff. The keys of the kingdom go to, to a very specifically defined follower. Access to the upper room is given to a select group of believers. The golden scepter status is reserved for those who the master can trust. A seat at the eternal table of the bread and water are for those who hunger and thirst today. A meal ticket that never expires will be held by the one he finds so doing. Some of y'all borrowed other folks' meal tickets. You ain't got to borrow no meal ticket because you got a meal ticket that ain't ever going to expire. Are you on the list and not just in the book? Because some of you are in the book of life, but you ain't on the list. You ain't on the list that get all the possessions. Because some people going to get in, but everybody ain't getting all the possessions. So you want to be among those that when it is time to pay your taxes, that it comes back that you got a full refund. And not only did you get a full refund, you got an extra bonus. You got some homestead credit. And that homestead credit is for your house that's up in heaven. And that homestead credit said... You getting all the possessions of the kingdom. You ain't ever going to go hungry. Your vessel ain't ever going to run out because you are the blessed servant. You chose life. Woo! So don't be that servant. 48 through 51 tell you what's going to happen to them other folks. Don't be those servants as a tail bear. The master late. Hey, he ain't coming. That's what these folks doing that's taking your money. That's taking your time. That's taking your blessing. These folks with these signs and wonders that you're listening to because you don't want to listen to the real folks. The folks that's telling you in order to get a prophecy, you got to pay $100 and then you got to pay $1,200 a year to be part of the membership to be on the prayer line every Monday at 7 o'clock. Yes, no. Da, 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 ha. Yes, some people are doing it and no, you shouldn't be. Because there are false people that's giving you good stuff they're giving you good stuff today, but you ain't getting no possessions in heaven. Because what's going to happen to them folks? The behavior of that wicked servant, carnal, worldly, riotous, right when that servant, because it's very interesting if you read these four verses, he talks specifically, Jesus, about that servant. That servant expects it not, ain't waiting. The master's going to return, but that servant, the one that, that's found not doing, the one that's not enduring, the one that's focused on the past and the future and ain't understanding that all that matters is the present, that servant is going to be cut into pieces and going to be put with the hypocrites in that place where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right, now we're going to walk away and worship because I know I didn't sound, feel like I done whooped you, but let me tell you, you ain't been no, you ain't been more been whooped than you've been in the hospital for 30 days. And the Lord didn't ask if he can use you. You ain't been, you ain't been whooped yet. So let me just tell you how to walk away and worship. God continues to speak, even from the hospital room. I'm sitting in my house today, but this word came from the hospital room. Do you hear me? You got to be grounded in the foundation of our present and our future. Start a discourse that will continue for a while. That's what I told you before. Now, do you see anything different now than you did before? Did you, 
did the Mount of Olives discourse change your decision about anything? Have you ended before you've endured? Don't give up yet. Let the praise on the inside manifest your mountain. But here's some other things on this next slide that I want to speak into your spirit. Let me speak this into your spirit right now as God's servant let, on, on his payroll. And you know, it's one thing being, it, it's good just to be in food service. Because let me tell you, if you're in food service, that means you making the bread of life. If you're in food service, that means the punch that you're making is going to make sure there ain't nobody in the kingdom ever going to go thirsty. But let me tell you, it's hard being on the executive pay, payroll on this thing. It's hard being in this five-fold ministry, and some of us got to stand up and be counted. And that's what I am committed to doing for the breath that I have left. So let me speak this into your spirit. Fig fruit can change your life. Fig fruit can change your life. Look at the leaves. Look at the leaves because summer is coming. This snow that's here today, a lot of it's going to be melted tomorrow. Fig fruit can change your life. Focus on the what and the why. The when will take care of itself. Focus on the what? Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, Father waiting on his bride, Holy Ghost manifesting the fruit within me. And the why? Because the father loved us so much that he sent his son to bridge the gap. So that one day he could call us back to be with him in eternity. Don't let's not make this thing so hard because what it ain't about is an election. What it ain't about is a country. What it ain't about is, is your baby daddy and your baby mama and, and whether you love him or whether she love you. It ain't about that. What this is about is the triune God here trying to get a tripartite man back into eternity. The win to take care of itself. The present just became your past. That quick. Everything I've talked about. If you're sick of me, it don't matter. It's in your past. If you don't like something that I preach, it's all right. It's over. It's in the past. And your future just became your present. What was going to happen? I'm saying it right now. Now faith. Oh, somebody get that revelation. Do you now understand Hebrews 11? Now faith is truly only active now. The only time you can have faith now. And that's why in Romans 1 it says, so God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. God reveals himself to us from now to now, from present to present. Now faith is because you can't have past faith and you can't have future faith. Do you believe now? Can you endure now? Woo, that was five messages by itself at one point. Press, I said this last night, the Holy Ghost gave me this. So this, this came last night, this last bullet. Press the flesh into the fruit, the nine. Press the flesh into the fruit. Then press into the flesh of the fruit. And then press into the center where lies the seed of the fruit, which is the word, which is Jesus Christ in us through the Holy Ghost as we wait for the Father's call for his body and his bride. Oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Now, if you don't, let me tell you something. Brenda Bowers ain't smart enough to come up with that. I can't, Dr. Bowers ain't smart enough to come up with that. PhD, DMP Bowers ain't smart enough to come up with that. So you better catch this thing, because this came This came through, this, this was a note that was in this last payroll check that I got from the kingdom, and it said, tell my people to press the flesh into the fruit. And that's the fruit of the spirit. Then that your vessel, press it into the fruit. And then press into the flesh of the fruit. And then press into the center of the fruit where the seed is. And the seed of the fruit is the word. And the word is Jesus Christ. And Christ is in us through the Holy Ghost, the nine. And that's who is in us as we wait for the Father's call for the body and for the bride. Woo, hallelujah. I know y'all glad. Let me just tell y'all this is the last slide. This is the last slide that's coming up. I just want you to know, it, and, and I, whoo, thank you, Jesus. I was going to say, I'm glad too, but I ain't, because I'll tell you this. I'll be willing to sit here as long as the Lord give me strength. I'll preach if I ain't preaching nobody with this computer. And somebody in the Lord say, push sin, and he'll send it where he needed to go. Because that's where I'm at in my life right now. It don't know, it's so much stuff in this natural that I don't know how it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, hope it don't happen, maybe it will happen. I'm so past that. I'm telling you, I'll sit right here till Jesus comes. 
because whatever you tell me to do, I'm willing to do. And whatever you tell me don't do, I'm willing to not do because the cares of this world have choked out the word in my life. My flesh has been at death's door so many times because of the cares of this world that I have tried to manage for myself and others. So right now, all I am is a vessel unto honor. Meet for the master's use prepared under every good word. Hallelujah. And I have examined myself and I have decided to abstain from those things that are worldly so that I can be used by God. Listen, there is a cornucopia of fruit with your name on it in this message today. There's a cornucopia of fruit with your name on it. So pick a piece of fruit. I say it last night, whatever your favorite fruit is, get it. Because when you pick up your piece of fruit, it's going to have all nine attributes in it. When you bite in it, it's going to have love, joy, and peace in it. Because that comes with the Holy Ghost. It just, just eat of it. And then you're going to find out that you can suffer longer than you thought you could. It's going to teach you how to be gentle and how to be good. It's going to give you some faith. It's going to give you some meekness. It's going to give you some temperance. Love and temperance is going to keep all those other seven in check. There is no law against the fruit, so eat the fruit. There is no law. You cannot eat too much fruit of the Holy Ghost. There is no law against it. There is no law that says you can only eat fruit on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And you can only eat fruit between the hours of noon and five. Ain't no law against the fruit. Keep eating the fruit. Because the fruit is the weapon of the 21st century warrior. The 21st century warrior is going to make it to the 21st day of this 21st year. We're, the, we're, we're going to make that in the next 11 that we're going to have in this 21st century. We're going to make every 21st day of this 21st year in the 21st century because the 21st century warrior, that weapon is eating fruit. Do you see that? All you got to do is keep eating fruit. Just get and pick the fruit that you want because now you got all nine in it. Your best weapon is to consume fruit. As a 21st century warrior, consume the fruit so that you can endure unto the end. So what piece of peace are you taking away today? I'm just ending where I started. Your ending assurance relies on your present endurance. God, I thank you. Ha! I thank you, Holy Ghost. I am nothing but an earthen vessel. The treasure lives inside of this stuff. Lord, as I work to present myself, so that it's not so hard for people to look on the earthen vessel, yet protecting the precious oil that's inside. Lord, as I'm understood less and accepted by you more, as you continue to promote in your kingdom and you raise the pay grade and you never fail. God, you've given me healing that you bypassed on others and I take it not for granted. You have spoken to me when you've been silent for others and I take it not for granted. And I know that I am not alone. So those that have followed, as we sit at the Mount Island and look back at the temple, Give us to really understand how important right now is. That it's all that we have. The reason we have to change our now is because now is all we have. We have to turn from our sin now so that now we can be in you. We have to grow from milk to meat now because now it's time to get at your table. We have to Stop wanting eternal sleep and rest now because now is the time to be woke. We have to stop trying to fix the things and the people of this world now because the things and the people belong to you like they always have now. So right now, I speak to the lonely I speak to the weary. I speak to the downtrodden. I speak to those that say this was too much to consume. I speak that they will just eat, even if all they can see are the leaves. I speak that they will know that summer is coming. And I speak to those that have the fig fruit 
that understand more than others. I speak to them that they will consume the fruit now, knowing that there is payment of labor required because of the payment and the payroll and the pay grade that they're in with you now. I speak for the now of vessels of honor, for the now of the body of Christ, for the now of the situation of this world. I speak to the now. I speak to the now that is turning heads to look at things that are not godly. I speak to the now that still are looking to themselves as the solution. I speak to the now. I speak to the now so the change can happen right now. I speak to the now because when are you coming back? Right now. Whenever you come back, even though you tarry, when you come, you will not tarry. It is our responsibility to write the vision and make it plain so that they can run with it whose hands it, place, it is placed in. And though it seems to tarry that vision, when it comes to pass, it will not tarry because when it comes to pass, it will be right now. So Holy Ghost, as you continue to reveal to us things that we thought we would never be able to understand, you're helping us to understand now. Oh, Holy Ghost, I thank you. I thank you for being the God of now. I thank you for hope being realized every time we step from the past to the present, to the future and to the present. I thank you, God, for the hope that every time we step from the past into the future, that it becomes present. So hope is always accompanied by now faith. Oh God, I just thank you for that revelation right now. Somebody needed to know that right now. What about my hope? Your hope manifests itself when the future becomes the present and then it is encapsulated in faith. Hallelujah. I pray for the people under the sound of my voice now and later. And I just give your name glory. I regret nothing and apologize even less because I have done what you anointed me to do for such a time as this. Help us to know that the now of the end is strictly dependent upon our endurance, and that gives us eternal assurance. In Jesus' mighty, miraculous, and matchless name. <laughs> and Satan, we won anyhow, despite your technological glitches that you thought was gonna get God's people down. This word fell on good ground. Hallelujah, glory to God. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. If you've been blessed, you can unmute and you can just say whatever you want to say to God.